Hi everyone, in this video I want to go through our first uh, in-class exercise uh, using the virtual genetics lab. Um, and so we did the VGL1 on autosomal dominance. Okay, so the way that this worked, remember, is we had two phenotypes. So here we'll just do blue and orange flies, but you had something that was different than that. Um, and we're telling you, we're, we're, we're saying definitely in this case, one is an autosomal dominant uh, over the other, right? So that so one of these is going to be dominant. Either blue is dominant or orange is dominant. And your task is to cross flies to figure out which one is dominant. Okay, so um, we do some some crosses. So in this case, we'll say a blue against a blue, and we get all blue. And then our question is, does this cross tell us uh, whether it's uh, whether blue is dominant or orange is dominant? And so what we want to think through is like, well, is this consistent with blue being dominant? And is it consistent with blue being recessive? Okay, so in this case, if we think about it, blue could be dominant. And that could be the case if, so if both of these were homozygous dominant, um, in, in which case all of their offspring would also be homozygous dominant and therefore be blue. So this is consistent with blue being dominant. Okay, is this consistent with blue being recessive? Well, if blue were recessive, then that would mean that both of these parents would have to be little a, little a. And so then all of their offspring would also be little a, little a. Uh, and that would be consistent. We would expect a blue versus a blue, uh, a blue cross with a blue would give us all blue offspring. Um, okay, so what that means is that this cross actually doesn't allow us to distinguish recessive versus dominant because we said that this this clock cross blue cross blue giving all blue um, could either be consistent with blue being dominant or with blue being recessive. So similarly, if we had orange cross orange and get all orange, the same exact logic would apply, right? This could either this could either mean orange is dominant or it could mean that orange is recessive. Okay, so this is not a cross that allows us to distinguish whether blue or orange is dominant. Um, how about in a cross like this? So if we cross a blue by an orange and we get a whole, uh, we get a mixture of blue and orange. Um, so does this allow us to distinguish blue versus orange? Well, in this case, blue could be dominant. In that case, it would be big A, little a versus little a, little a could give us this. Um, or blue could be recessive. So we could still see this exact same pattern if um, the orange was big A, little a and the blue was little a, little a. Okay, so, so these aren't working for us, right? We need a cross where only one of the two possible hypotheses, the two possible explanations works. So there are actually two different kinds of crosses, so we'll go through them one at a time. Okay, so the, for the first way, um, it, let's think about a cross where we have blue crossed orange giving us all orange. And I should say I've only drawn six here, but let's imagine it's a lot more. Let's imagine it's 30 flies. Um, so we cross blue, blue cross orange, and we get 30 flies, all of them orange. Okay, so this is consistent with blue being recessive, right? That could be the case if blue were little a, little a, and this orange were big A, little a, bi sorry, big A, big A, because in that case, all the progeny would carry a big A and therefore be um, the dominant phenotype, which is orange. So this is consistent with blue being recessive, Let's see, is it consistent with blue being dominant? Okay, so if blue were dominant, that would tell us we have at least one uh, dominant allele in this parent. Um, and in that case, we would know that the other parent is little a, little a, is recessive. Um, so in that case, we would expect some little a, little a's, for instance, if this was big A, little a. So some of them could be a orange. But we would also expect some of the descendants to carry a big A. So that means that these individuals, because they carry a big A, um, they should be blue. So this is not consistent with blue being dominant, because these ones should be blue. Okay, so, so let's remember what we've worked through here. So we said that in this kind of a cross, where blue crossed with orange gives all orange, that is consistent with blue being recessive, but it's not consistent with blue being dominant. So given that we've told you that one of these two is just a simple autosomal dominant, that means that blue must be recessive. 
So for the answers for the questions, um, let's through, think through what we were talking about here. First, uh, we asked you for a, um, a Punnett square that shows what you think the cross is. So this, this cross of blue versus orange giving all orange. Um, so first we ask you to, to show how this cross is consistent with your hypothesis. Okay, so if blue is recessive, that's our hypothesis, then we have blue is little a, little a, crossed with orange is big A, big A. So in that case, we expect we can fill out the Punnett square. Um, and we have all four of these are big A, little a, which, if blue is recessive, means they should all be orange. So this works. This is consistent, right? This, this basically is showing uh, this same thing as our cross, where when we cross a, an orange with a blue, we get all orange. Okay, so this, this is what we were looking for when we say, show us a Punnett square um, explaining the results. And then we ask you, show us a Punnett square showing that it's not consistent with the results uh, for the other hypothesis. Okay, so that would mean if blue is dominant, so that would mean that we know that orange is little a, little a, and blue has to have at least one big A, uh, and then we don't know what the other one is. It could be big A, big A, it could be big A, little a. So now we can fill out our Punnett square. So in the top, we have big A, little a. On the bottom, actually, we have dash little a. We don't know much about these ones. But we know that there should be some big A, little a. And so the key here is that if blue is dominant, then that should give us big A, little a dominance, uh, dominant blue flies. Uh, and we, again, we don't know about these. So this is not consistent with what we see, which is that we cross an orange with a blue and we get all orange. Um, so this is what we were talking about in terms of showing a Punnett square that proves uh, that it cannot be the other hypothesis. Okay, so we, here's our first way. Uh, way two, uh, we have a cross between individuals of unlike phenotypes, which gives rise to all one phenotype. So, so you know, the rest of the video, we're, I'm going to go through the other kind of cross. So if you already feel comfortable with that, um, this would be a good time to stop the video. Okay, so again, we, want, we need a cross where only one explanation works. Here's the second way that I know about. Okay, so this is going to be a new problem. So we just, in the last problem, um, we said that blue could be dominant or recessive. So we're not going to, sorry, in the last problem we said do, blue has to be recessive. Uh, but in this new problem, we're going to start again. Same blue and orange flies, but the outcome might be different. Okay, so the second kind of cross where we can see, um, where, where we can prove which one is dominant is, is like this. So here we have two flies of the same phenotype, two blue flies crossed, giving a mixture of blue and orange. Okay, so under this set, so we can ask ourselves, could blue be dominant? Well, if blue could be dominant, if it's a cross between heterozygotes, right? So if, if blue is dominant, that means this big A gives us uh, blue. So both of these flies would be blue. And then if they cross, we'll get some flies that carry a, a big A. In fact, the majority, three-fourths. Uh, but under these circumstances, we could get flies that are little a, little a, um, and that therefore would be orange. Um, so, so we found, yes, blue could be dominant. Okay, so now we can ask, could blue be recessive? Well, if blue recess is recessive, then we know that both of these flies must be little a, little a. Um, so that means we're going to have, it, it makes sense we'd see some blue descendants because they'd be little a, little a. Uh, but the problem is, that actually all of our flies should be little a, little a, little a, so that all of these flies should be little a, which means that they should be blue, right? Because little a, little a uh, should give us blue if blue is, is recessive. And so now we've shown that blue could not be recessive because if it were, then these flies should be blue as well. Okay, so now what we've shown is that under this cross, blue could be dominant, but blue cannot be recessive. So that means that blue must be dominant. Okay, so let's go through what the Punnett square for this would look like. So again, we're going to start with um, our, the, our preferred hypothesis, the one that our cross is consistent with, and then we're going to do the one that it's not consistent with, right? That's, that's question three versus question five. So for question three, I think it's three, it might be three or four, but the first one, the first one where we ask you for uh, a Punnett square. So if blue is dominant, then we have our hypothesis here that both of them are big A, little a. So when we fill out the Punnett square, we get big A, little a, 
we get a mixture of genotypes, right? All four, all three different genotypes, which will give us some blue flies just like we see, and will give us some orange flies just like we see. And so we can say, yep, our hypothesis does work. Okay, and so then our next task is to say, what do we expect to see if blue is recessive? Well, if blue is recessive, then that would mean that um, both blue flies must be little a, little a. So all their offspring, once we fill out the Punnett square, should be little a, little a. That means that they should all be blue. Um, and so this does not work, right? If blue were recessive, then a blue, blue cross should give us only blue flies. Okay, so we have our two ways of solving this problem. Either of these is a great way to uh, answer those problems on the homework, either with a cross between individuals of unlike phenotypes that give us all one phenotype. So hairy versus hairless, giving us all hairy, or a cross between individuals of the same phenotype that give us both phenotypes. So six leg versus six leg, um, with the descendants being both six leg and five leg. So I hope that helped. I hope that helped to clear, clear some things up. Thanks a lot.